Good morning, and thank you for being with us here today in San Bernardino. Um, I have an important announcement to make, but before we get into the announcement, I want to recognize the people who are standing here with me. Uh, this is truly a, a team effort, and I want to make sure you s you get to hear from some of the members of the team and know uh, about some of the others that have been working hard to make today's announcement possible. I'd like to begin with the three individuals who will speak after I do. Let me uh, give, their, give you their names in the order that they will be speaking. Randy Corgan, who is the Secretary Treasurer of the Teamsters here, local uh, 1932, will speak after I do. Then I will have Yasi, and I'm going to make sure I get these names correctly, so give me a second. Yasi uh, Kavadaze. Pretty good. Yasi Kavadaze, who is with Sierra Club, is here with us. And uh, Andrea Vidaure is also here with us, and she is with the Center for Community Action and Environmental Justice. Um, with me from the Department of Justice, our team, the lead attorney on our case who, uh, who is handling this matter, Yvonne Chi, the uh, supervising uh, Deputy Attorney General, who is the head of the Environmental Justice Bureau for the Department of Justice, Christy Vosberg, and the uh, Special uh, Assistant to the Attorney General who handles environmental, em, environmental matters for me, Arsenio Mataka. Uh, all these individuals are, are very familiar with what, what we're going to discuss today. And more than anything, I think we're all very proud to be able to stand here together announcing today's action because it has taken quite a bit of effort. And it is so important for the people who attend this school, who live in this community, uh, to know what this is all about. We're here today because the Federal Aviation Administration's unlawful attempts to greenlight the Eastgate Air Cargo Facility Project located not far from this very high school, not far from Indian Springs High School, or from, quite honestly, a, a library nearby, the YMCA, another elementary school, and a Head Start preschool program in this area, all of them would be impacted by the Federal Aviation Administration's actions in greenlighting this Eastgate Air Cargo Facility Project. The facility project is a large airport expansion project that will have a significant environmental impact on local communities and the children and families who call this area home. These families are already disproportionately burdened by pollution. This expansion project at San Bernardino International Airport would involve the construction of a 658,000 square foot air cargo warehouse and it would generate at least an additional additional 500 truck trips and 25 flights at the airport every day. That means pollution from 500 more truck trips and 26 more flights being poured into the air that the children here, the families here, breathe every day already. One of these communities, the San Bernardino uh, Muscoy community, is a disadvantaged community already burdened by, one, pollution from multiple sources, and two, high, very high asthma rates. In fact, the community is so affected by pollution that the Air Resources Board selected it for an air emissions reduction program. This project here at the airport, as you can imagine, will do just the opposite that the air emissions reduction program is intended to do. Today, we're here to announce that we are filing a lawsuit against the Federal Aviation Administration, the San Bernardino International Airport Authority, and Hillwood Enterprises, the project's developer. Because in California, we can't have business as usual hurt distressed communities in our state. We have a responsibility to provide justice, including environmental justice, to all of California's communities. None of us, whether it's the California Department of Justice, the FAA, the San Bernardino Airport Authority, or the developer of this project, have the right to turn their backs on the families in this area, nor can we turn our backs on the rule of law. These agencies and the developer 
are well aware of exactly what kind of damage this air cargo facility project will cause. In October 2018, well more than a year ago, after reviewing the project under the California Environmental Quality Act, the airport authority here issued a report that found that the project would have significant and unavoidable impacts on the environment and the communities here. But when the airport authority reviewed the project under the National Environmental Policy Act, or NEPA as it's called, it failed to produce an environmental impact statement, which NEPA requires for all projects that may have a significant impact on the environment. Last year, in November 2019, the California Department of Justice submitted a formal comment letter to the FAA, and we called on the FAA and the airport authority to perform a complete environmental analysis under NEPA by, one, preparing an environmental impact statement, two, correcting their flawed air emissions model, uh, excuse me, their modeling, three, reconciling the project with state and local requirements to control air pollution, and four, examining the expansion's impact on the nearby communities. I also want to mention that we reached out to these agencies well before we submitted our comment letter and since we submitted our comment letter. Back in November, maybe wait, Back in November of 2019, we contacted the airport authority. Uh, then in the, on the 26th of November, we actually submitted our formal con uh, comment letter to the FAA, which the airport authority was aware of. After the comment letter had been submitted, right around Christmas, we contacted the FAA and spoke to them again. We have been reaching out to the FAA and to the San Bernardino Airport Authority to make it clear that not just us who are here today, but many people have lodged their concerns with this project. In all of those communications and with that formal comment letter, they declined to take up the concerns that we had raised. By December of last year, the FAA had actually approved the project despite our concerns that we raised in our formal, formal comment letter. And by the following week, construction had actually occurred and started on the project. The actions of these agencies not only deprived California of our right to an adequate review process under NEPA, but it also put the state's air quality and the health of our communities, especially those here in the surrounding area, at risk. Now, we understand that this project will bring jobs to the community. Our intent, and let me make this really clear, our intent has never been to stop this project. It has always been to make sure that moving forward, this project takes the community's well-being into account. No parent would want to send their child to school knowing that the air they breathe at that school will be polluted. And parents here in San Bernardino shouldn't be forced to make that choice because the FAA chose not to play by the rules. So we're ready to make this commitment. We're ready to move forward. We're ready to make our argument in court through this lawsuit because we understand that this community here in San Bernardino is ready to move forward as well. And we want to do it, as I said from the very beginning, as a team player as a partner, as a partner with the airport authority here, as a partner with the FAA, but most importantly, as a partner with the families, the children and parents who live in and around this airport and this project who will have to live with the results of this expansion project forever on in. Let me now ask Randy Corrigan from the Teamsters to step forward. And Randy, if you'll do me a favor, if you can let Yasi and Yasi, if you can let Andrea, no, uh, when you're done, and let them come to the microphone. Randy. Thank you. 1977, San Bernardino was an all-America city. Great, great jobs, a thriving and growing economy and community. Today, things are very different. 
Back then, the trade-off was air quality. Many of us were children at that time. We had a hard time breathing, first aid stop smog alerts, and we couldn't go out and play. Fortunately, we're seeing some of that return in a different way. What that trade-off taught us over these last few decades is that technology and science has taught us how to pay attention to the toxins in the air and to how to build responsibly. And that's one of the things that's happened with this, with this opposition to this project. It's not in complete opposition, as, as was stated earlier. It's that we would like to see development, but we'd like to see it done responsibly with the right partnerships. A lot of partnerships have been formed in this region with the community, with labor, with the residents, to come together and talk and have a true understanding of how something like this is going to continue to impact the region. Forty years later, here we are. We have to ask ourselves some questions. Did we learn from our past? Is our community thriving? Are we bringing good jobs to this area? Can we have a healthy community? And can San Bernardino be an all-America city again? In 1990, if you look at what an average warehouse worker made and what the starting wage of warehouse workers were in 1990, today workers are making less than they were in 1990. It's an incredible situation that we have to look at that has suppressed the labor market in the area. So not only has develop, have developers been able to kind of have their way in the last few decades, we now have even more pollution in the air, and we have situations that are making our community even more and more, uh, with more and more struggles. What we're asking for is a community benefit agreement that doesn't prevent the project, but actually has a true partnership where the community, labor, environmental interests, and the local elected sit down and have a good conversation about good jobs, good air, good communities, and a good future. The Teamsters have more than 20,000 working families in this region, and we have hundreds of working families that live in this immediate area. At the end of the day, we would like to see everybody sit down and actually build a project that is going to be here for a very long time, impact the area for a very long time, and have at the end of the road good jobs, good environment, and something good for our community. I'd like to next introduce Yasi Kavazade. Thank you. Today, I am honored to be representing the Sierra Club, an environmental organization based right here in the Inland Empire. At the Sierra Club, we believe everybody deserves the right to breathe clean air and live a healthy life, which is why we don't believe that the Eastgate Air Cargo Logistics Center at the San Bernardino International Airport has done enough in its Federal Aviation Administration's NEPA environmental assessment to keep us safe from its polluting impacts. Our communities here in San Bernardino are resilient in the face of danger. Every day, we battle some of the highest levels of poverty, violence, and air pollution in the country. The impact of truck trips and around-the-clock plane visits will leave a massive impact on our air and our climate. Inland Empire youth volunteers from the Sierra Club are striking and fighting for cleaner air. While we have developers, city officials, and regulatory agencies like FAA who often forget that our communities live and feel the impacts of gas and diesel from tons of emissions sourced from warehousing and airport facilities next to our homes and schools. Our youth believe we can have a, tr a transition away from fossil fuels like gas and diesel towards clean, zero emissions logistics to protect our health and our planet. We dream of green trades to build the future of the city to run it efficiently while providing a living wage. This dream can be a reality. All we need is the willingness from the developer and the airport authority to come together like we have. Our community can no longer afford unexpected hospital visits and a roadmap towards climate chaos for generations to come. This is why we are proud to stand alongside the great state of California's Attorney General, Javier Becerra, 
who is representing the people's interests in this lawsuit instead of business as usual. Working alongside our partners and groups in the labor, environmental, adjustment, uh, environmental justice, community leaders and groups, we strive to see a future designed that we can be proud of instead of being fired and laid off, injured, displaced, and polluted. Our movement calls for mitigation on the environmental and community process that was absent during environmental reviews for this project. The Sierra Club is working hard here in the IE, in Sacramento, and DC to stop the continued abuse of our earth at any means. In the midst of a federal administration that rolls back environmental protections, we need, a str we need strong support from leaders like Je Attorney General Becerra to do the right thing and support our movement for cleaner air and community benefits, rather than the continued cycle of community casualties. Thank you all, and up next, I have the pleasure of introducing Andrea Vidaure from the Center for Community Action and Environmental Justice. Hello, my name is Andrea Vidaurre. I'm with the Center for Community Action and Environmental Justice. For far too long, communities here in the Inland Empire have had to live with the deadly consequences of decisions that were made by people who ignored our quality of life. We've had to suffer through the impacts of living in overpolluted communities because the government agencies that were responsible for the well-being of our lives and our environment sacrificed that for the perceived economic prosperity that was never delivered. These types of decisions have made it difficult for a mom to walk her child to school because of the potential nosebleed they'll get. It has limited the amount of time that children at high school, such as the one behind us today, are allowed to go outside and play sports like any child should be able to do. And worst of all, it's left generations of families struggling with how to deal with the cancers, asthma, and other illnesses that come with living in a community whose quality of life is not being respected. How is it possible that a child living here in San Bernardino under the age of five is already diagnosed with asthma and industrial allergies? It's possible because just last year alone, there were over 100 days when the air was not healthy enough for us to be outside. And actually, the state as a whole has never complied to the clean air standards that were set forth by the Clean Air Act, leaving San Bernardino to rank as the county with the worst smog pollution in the nation. And in these living conditions, the Eastgate Air Cargo Air Fa Cargo Facility proposed by the developer Hillwood Enterprises set forth to start a 24-hour cargo operation at the Sa San Bernardino International Airport without any benefits to the community. We know this project is going to be bringing in about a ton of air pollution every single day on top of the clear impacts it will have on the residents living in proximity to the facility. Yet the Federal Aviation Administration that is responsible for upholding the National Environmental Protection Policy Act and the San Bernardino International Airport proceeded regardless of this significance. Allowing for construction of this facility to begin without taking into account the full environmental impact. This is the continued pattern that has historically existed in our communities. A pattern of agencies ignoring and dismissing the concerns of residents that needs to come to an end. We need for the industries, developers, and government agencies that are circumventing the processes that were laid out to allow for our community voice to be respected. Our communities are inside and outside of these facilities. We're in the several schools that surround the airport, and we're asking for more than the poor job quality and the environmental degradation that is being proposed. Thank you to the Environmental Justice Bureau of the Attorney General, Javier Becerra, for standing with the health and well-being of our communities and the workers in the Inland Empire. Um, and moreover, for standing for what is right in the midst of a federal government also trying to silence our concerns. Thank you.